Touring Car Masters, Stephen Johnson's alongside me as we get ready for this first race of the weekend. It's round five, John Bowes on pole. He is also the man who won here last year and he's been a dominant man the last couple of years. And Stephen, it's a double file rolling start. Something different that they've had this year with the uh, rolling starts. I think I was talking to a few of the guys, a bit hit and miss, some like them, some don't. So oh. it's gonna be interesting to see what happens. There's the championship points on your screen as they come into this weekend. If you're in a Porsche, you hate this format because the big V8s can stand on the throttle and drive away from you very quickly. So it's John Bow on pole, Jim Richards alongside, Andrew Baniki's next in the black Camaro, then Tony Karafalovsky in that yellow Mustang. We're off and running here at Hidden Valley. And it's all about the big V8s. John Bow, the Hall of Famer, leads us down to turn one, but this is where you hold your breath because they're all in there three wide. They've made it through. Bow clear, though. Jim Richards won the last round at Winton. Oh. That was a little tight. Adam Bressington in that purple Falcon. And that's Bressington. That purple Ford. Eddie Abonista next. There's Jason Gomez or the Isaac Tirana. That's actually a new Tirana that built up a new car since the last round at Winton. The guys at Matt Stone Racing. Jimmy Stone heavily oh. involved there. It's good on the brakes too. It's very good on the brakes. I didn't think I was going to stop there for a minute. I don't think he did either. <laughs> this is on board with Brett Yulden in the green Monaro, which is always in and among the action. There's Tony Karafalovsky up in front. He's the guy who's the only multiple race winner this year. He's had two race wins, but the rest of them have been shared between a range of other drivers. Andrew Vaniki and Mark King, John Bow, Jim Richards. And for the moment, it's Bow who leads the way at the end of lap one. You can see there uh, Tony Karafalovsky in the orangey, yellowy Mustang there. He uh, he started quite a bit further up than that. He got hung out to dry on uh, on the first corner there and has dropped a lot of positions. Started from fourth, but has slipped back in the order, crosses the line, tenth. At the end of lap one, Maniki's up to second and he's going charging after the Mustang. Karafalovsky, have a look at the brakes, trying to get down and get by Mark King, who coming into this weekend leads the Pro-Am category. There's three categories in TCM, replay of turn one. That's Cam Mustang. Mason in the red Mustang who's taken over that car this weekend that his dad still oh. normally drives. And that's Karen Falofsky, and that's why he dropped so much time because he was wide and then delayed on the exit. So there's no doubt about it. They're older cars, but they're quick. There's some money spent on these things, and they are really rockets down the front straight. I spoke to Kerry McMahon yesterday, who's in one of the SLR 5000 Tiranas, 255 k's down the main straight. Compared to a V8 supercar, it's not far away. No, it's not. It's not. It's, uh, it's probably only 15, 20 k's an hour slower than a V8 supercar, which is uh, pretty amazing for these things. There's a lot of work going into them, though. You can you can just see, you know, even looking at John Bauer's car. I went for a drive with uh, with John, and uh, in the ride session on uh, on Friday afternoon, and it was uh, it sort of took me back to the old school V8 supercar H pattern, no shift car, back to the back to the grassroots, and it was uh, it was quite enjoyable actually. But, uh, John actually did say that there was quite a bad smell in the car, but it wasn't coming from me. So <laughs> now, there is a bit of chat that we might see you drive that Mustang in a round somewhere this year and JB might jump into another car to continue on his championship fight. But where's that at? Could you see that happen? Yeah, absolutely. We're still looking uh, looking at doing that, you know, hopefully at Eastern Creek, but it all depends on the car that John is wanting to jump into. Obviously, he's got a championship to worry about. If he can jump into a car that's going to be up the front somewhere, he's happy to do that for me to get into his car and uh, just create a bit of interest in the, in the Touring Car Masters category. Uh, know this bloke? Seen him around? Yeah, I, you know, I spent a little bit of time with him on the odd occasion. <laughs> he's looking younger every day. Told you everything you knew. <laughs> Actually, John taught me a lot of what I know. He does. Believe it or not. I'll tell you what, he's just broken the lap record as well last time around. A 115.8. He had a major margin in qualifying. He was over a second clear of the rest of the field. This is on board with Brett Yulden. Remember, they all run on a hoosier tyre. It's actually got some grooves in it. And they don't get to throw too many at them from qualifying onwards. They've got four new tyres and two used tyres. This is on board with Brett Yulden. And you see there, yeah, they're old cars, but the interiors, they're really well crafted. 
There's some really good go fast bits. Oh. Look in front, Karen Filofsky down the inside on Jason Gomesel for eight spots side by side on the exit. And the Holden Power wins out. Definitely an advantage uh, building this new uh, Tirana here. Quite a bit lighter. Same running gear as what they had in the car at Winton and they started the year with, but brand new shell. They've really taken some weight out of it and uh, you know it, it's showing here because it's certainly not a track that you would expect this car, although it has got good horsepower, to be um, you know challenging up as far as it is. He's not afraid to give Eddie Abonisa a bit of a helping hand around the hairpin. And he sits second in the Pro Masters category coming in this weekend. It's pretty close between he and John Bow and Jim Richards. But it's Bow who leads the way. Three seconds back to Andrew Manik. It's round three this weekend. They've had a really long break since the last round at Winton. But it's great to have them back up here because they're regulars here. It's their seventh visit to Hidden Valley. They've been here every year from 2008 onwards. They've only missed the one year. Look at this. Mariki using all of the road because Richard is back up with him. But Bow's cleared away. He has cleared away now, and you can see he's put together some... Uh, and, you know, even Andrew Medecki, looking at the timing screen, has broken the previous lap record. And Bow's the man who is on a roll here. He's won the last six races straight. He's been a round winner here three times. Won't stop these guys from chasing him down. Jim Richards, the seven-time Bathurst winner. The man who's driven it all and won in it all as well. Jimmy's car is a... Uh, as an outright car, yes, it's, it's quite fast. Probably not quite as fast as John and, uh, and Medici's, but it's a lighter car. It's much better on its tyres. You will see Jim, you know, there's still six laps to go here. Six laps at Hidden Valley with the the, the difference in, uh, in, in track condition and temperature and uh, track surface changes. You'll see Jimmy come into his own in the last couple of laps of this race. And just at the back of this queue is Greg Keane in that yellow Porsche since 11. How's Karen Filofsky over the white line? Bang! Into the side of Eddie Abelisa. They play for keeps in Touring Car Masters. There's no doubt about it. Mark King in that red Camaro was able to slip on by. So it's a pretty good fight at the tail end of the top ten. Out front, though, John Bow leads the way in Mustang Sally. 4.7 seconds is the margin. It really is a battle of the miners. We're going old school in Darwin today. Join us for more after the break. Back in Hidden Valley, Touring Car Masters in the top end. Eddie Abonisa is off the road, though, at Turn 1 in the Darwin's cheapest cars, Falcon. There's Tony Hunter going by in the Monster, and, in fact, Eddie is going to give it away here, or at least be very kind to the signage department oh. and leave the coat's higher sign there. gomisal has gone around at Turn 5. race distance and oh. we're starting to lose a few cars it's still John Bow who leads the way by 5.3 seconds but the I seek Tirana new car this weekend rejoins let's have a look at what's unfolded it's a DIY moment spins Ooh. it in the grass the rest of them do manage to get by and the former V8 Ute race has left to wait and watch as they all ran on through this is on board Ooh, that was tight Brett Yulden just making it through in the Monaro I wonder, if, I wonder if Eddie, Eddie Albanese has got a problem from that earlier hit with uh, Tony Karen Filoski at turn one. Quite possibly, Stephen, quite possibly. I'll tell you what, Andrew Maniki has a problem. It's called John Jimmy Richards <laughs> because that Falcon Sprint's a smaller engine car. It's a bit lighter, so it's a bit nicer on the tyres. But this is the car that Jimmy's been running for quite a few years. It's a really well-sorted machine, and you can see on the graphic there, Last four laps, he's just been nibbling away margin. Yeah. It's all over the back of the Camaro. Medecki's won here before, 2011. Jimmy Richards has won here before in 2010. This is the fight for sixth. Adam Bressington back here in the category this weekend in a different car to what he's run before. Karen Falofsky behind him, this fantastic Mustang that's won a couple of races this year. And Bressington we've seen in a HQ before in TCM and a few years back in V8 Ute racing. Runs in sixth place at the moment. It's a beautifully built car, Tony's uh, Tony's car there. It's uh, uh, and he's certainly not shy in uh, in <laughs> racing it hard and and fair. Well, you know, like it, every race I think I come to and watch, you know, he's in the mix with someone and swapping paint with someone, and it's great to see. Went for a wander through the TCM garages and paddock 
yesterday. Plenty of familiar faces. Glenn Seaton's here. He's assisting with a range of teams and their suspension setups and the like. This is close. Who's got the better breaks? Bressingham's got the line, and that's what will count for this fight for sixth position. Greg Crick's here this weekend. He's acting as driving standards observer. There is the man I spoke of. Glenn Seaton watching on. His young fellow Aaron is going racing in a, a production car, so we might see another Seaton on the radar in the next couple of years. But I mentioned about Greg Crick. He's been quite ill since the Bathurst 12 hour early in the year where he drove for Erebus. He had some carbon monoxide poisoning that's really knocked him around. He's had to spend some time out of that charger that he normally drives, but we're looking forward to getting him back a little bit later in the year. Yeah, absolutely. No, Cricky's had a, uh, a bit of a tough run. He really struggled with carbon monoxide poisoning. I was, I was actually with him the Sunday night after the 12 hour. He, uh, you know, he was looking fine then, but it wasn't until three and four days later that it really, uh, really started to hurt him. On board here with Brett Yildon. Doing a fantastic job. Right behind Mark King, and you see Tony Karen Filoski and Adding Brushington just in front of these two. Starting their second last lap, two laps to go when they cross the line this time. And Karen is still trying hard to get past Brushington. He went the outside the last lap and didn't do it. I'm not sure why he didn't try to go down the inside of this lap, but he's still going to be hung on the outside here. And once he's out there, it's very, very hard. He's still in the game here. He's still he, hanging he, in. He is hanging in, though. Pressing and gives him a bit of room. And that's what he was trying to do because he gives him the inside for the next one. He's got it done. Nice job. You can just see there, Tony's car is slightly lighter than uh, the Bressington's car. Tire wear may be coming into it a little bit here. But later in, in the weekend, when you see, you know, obviously it doesn't help when you're hanging it sideways <laughs> like that. But uh, later in the weekend with races, uh, with the second race, massive uh, gain from, you know, from this guy, Stu Richards. He'll be someone to, to look at in the next upcoming races because they have to use these tyres all weekend. These guys are eight seconds behind this man, John Bow, the defending Hidden Valley Round winner in Touring Car Masters. Has been busy this year. He's been in GT Ferraris. He's been in production BMWs. He's driving something just about every weekend in some way, shape or form. He's got more frequent fly points than you and I put together. A bit further back here. This is on board with Keith Kasuki in the big XB Coupe Falcon. He's been a busy man, Keith, actually. He flies in from Papua New Guinea for each round, but he's been overseas doing some endurance racing at Spa and at Zandvoort as well, and he's been doing a bit of GT racing in, in the Scari. This is a very different car, this big XB Coupe that has got some serious power. It's, it's got some serious power, and you can tell there just how he absolutely murdered Cameron Mason coming off that corner and pulled five or six car lengths up here to turn five. And you'll see Mason close right up under brakes here and turn into the hairpin. Cam Mason driving the car that his dad Steve normally drives, the Camaro that Cam normally steers. is having a little bit of work done, so he's taken over the fast back for the weekend. But speaking of fast Ben in fast cars, John Bauer has done it really nicely. A pole position, and he will keep the streak rolling. This is seven race wins in a row at Hidden Valley in Darwin. He starts off round three of the Touring Car Masters in really nice style. Bow first, margin second. Medecki will get home in the Camaro. So they swap spots in this race, Medecki and Richards, from where they started. So it's a Mustang winning from a Camaro, a Falcon, another Falcon, and then another Mustang. So moral of the story is anyone in a GM product needs to stand up. <laughs> Yes, there's quite a few Mustangs up the front, isn't there? And uh, you know, there's a few Fords here, Kasuki. Um, sorry, Karen Filoski, he's, he's in another Mustang. So, yeah, there's um, some pretty impressive machinery up the front there. And uh, this is Rusty French in the Porsche car for the Sky Sands car. Of course, the co-owner of Ford Performance Racing. Had, had a little steer of Cameron Waters Dunlop Series car at Winton going back a couple of weeks, but he's a long-time Porsche racer. He ends up finishing in position number 15 from 19th on the grid. But there is John Bow. Final margin was a cool 7.7 .7 seconds with a new lap record, a 115.8. These things fairly do move around this track. And that is TCM done for their first race of the weekend. They'll be back again tomorrow at the Sky City Triple Crown. And the chase for this guy will pick back up. Greg Keane in the Porsche did manage to get into the top 10. They love their racing up here in Darwin. TCM has become a total integral part of 
the Sky City Triple Crown. So John Bauer bags the points from race one. Tony Karafalovsky, that was a nice move around the outside to get himself up to six. Mark King, who leads the way in the Pro-Am category, he finished in eighth from Brett Yulden. Greg Keane rounded at the top ten from Kerry McMahon. Chris Stilwell in the Mustang, Tony Hunter in the Monza, Wayne Person, Wayne Mercer, I should say, in the Falcon. Uh, Amanda Sparks back in the category this weekend too. She's had a busted wrist for a little while, so she's glad to be back out behind the wheel. A couple of DNFs, Eddie Abonisa ended up in dramas. Les Wormsley's had some problems with that Monaro this weekend. 